Okay there, hi, and welcome to this uh, Dynamic Web webinar about the 8.41 release. My name is Eska, and uh, somewhere online I also have uh, Nikolai, uh, who will uh, join us uh, later in this session. This webinar is about the service release 8.41, and uh, as it is a service release, it doesn't contain that much new functionalities, but uh, a lot of small features uh, to help you make it even easier to implement Dynamic Web. And we uh, have some improvements on uh, items, Razor and the FSC uh, implementation, and also a lot of bug fixes uh, in this release. So let's uh, dig into it and uh, see a lot about the new features that we have introduced in, the, in this service release. First off, a new concept. Uh, or it is an old concept, but uh, in a new uh, package called my lists. It's actually the old favorite list that we have uh, extended. So now it's uh, called my list or uh, in the common language wish list. Uh, many of you use this already as a wish list and we have extended the old uh, favorite list with the uh, functionalities. So you can uh, create several lists on the, on the website uh, uh, and each list can have a date for, for the event. And you can send out, email out the, the list with the, with your wishes or whatever it contains. And people can buy from the list and the quantity of your wishes will, uh, will count down. So, uh, so you won't get a lot of the same, uh, the same products that you have wished for. This functionality is, uh, is new and, uh, we have, uh, had a lot of requests on this. So I hope uh, to see a lot of implementations in the near future. Another thing that we have introduced is uh, the lead mails uh, that you can schedule and get, uh, for instance, every day. Uh, now you won't get every lead that uh, that enters the website, but you can select only to to get leads in uh, in a certain lead state, for instance, uh, approved or email sent, and so on. So this is for the the lead mails that you have uh, scheduled on your website. And now we have some uh, some functionalities on the email marketing module. The first one is uh, again an old feature that we have uh, that we have reintroduced. Um, you from the 8.4, you had the possibility to create a smart search to uh, to reach out for all the recipients that you have sent an, uh, an email to, but the, that haven't opened the email. So this smart search were were quite a complex to set up. So we have introduced so that you can now right click a sent email and uh, press the resend to unresponsive recipients. So uh, this will uh, create a copy of the original email and uh, create a smart search that will uh, select all the recipients that have received the email but haven't opened it yet. Another thing for the email marketing, or actually it's in the, the smart search, but uh, it's uh, meant to, to be used in the email marketing, uh, a search for last login time. So now we can select users that haven't been logged in for like the last three months or so, and, and we can interact with them, send out emails, vouchers, and so on uh, to uh, reactivate them on the website. So this is the last login in, in the smart search. Another functionality for the email marketing is uh, fallback tags. We have this uh, personalization tag, so you can write, for instance, dear username, uh, we're happy to present you, to you, and so on. Um, but if you haven't got the right data in, in the database, uh, if you're missing the username or the first name and so on, uh, we have now fallback tags, so we can write dear customer instead, instead of uh, having uh, some text that doesn't make sense. So these fallback tags works uh, both for subject lines and emails and also in the, in the real email. Another thing for the email marketing, we have a re we had a request on uh, the possibility to create a link for edit user, for instance, uh, and instead of uh, just making a link in the email and, and let the user uh, go to a page where he should log in, we now have a token that you can send with the with the link, so that you will uh, be able to lock the user in on, on the website automatically. And uh, this should uh, increase the, the usability uh, a lot for, for users that would like to edit their, their profile and so on. And yet another thing for email marketing, also a feature request that came from you guys. Uh, we had uh, SendGrid as a third part uh, component to, to use as a send uh, provider. And uh, now we also have uh, the send provider Mandrill. It's from uh, produced from uh, MailChimp and it gives you up to uh, 12,000 free emails per month 
So it's uh, worth looking into uh, this uh, third part component uh, as a sent uh, provider. And another provider or another third part component, it's a new payment gateway uh, called ePay. It's a European uh, company that uh, that provides uh, all the the common uh, card, uh, cards in, in Europe. And uh, it's now uh, standard supported in, in Dynamic Web. Uh, look at the ePay.eu to, uh, to see more about this. And talking about payment providers, payment gateways, we have updated the DIPS payment uh, gateway with uh, three things. The first thing is uh, the post template uh, functionality. Now you can uh, send uh, or you can post templates with the with the transaction, so you can design the the DIPS uh, payment window uh, when the user gets to that window. Uh, another thing is the add card card fee by DIPS. It uh, lets you. Uh, set that DIP should handle all fees for uh, a transaction instead of you setting up uh, difficult calculations uh, on Dynamic Web. Now you can just uh, tick this box and the DIPS will handle all the transaction fees and add it to the order. And the third thing is, uh, is Klarna. It uh, was possible uh, before to, to use Klarna. It's an invoice service for those of you who doesn't know. Uh, it was possible to set it up with, uh, with DIPS and Dynamic Web uh, in, in the past, but now it's uh, it's standard supported and it's much easier to set up Klarna invoice. And the last thing that I will show you is uh, mandatory fields in e-commerce. We have added a column to this uh, to this table where you set up uh, uh, about the fields in, in the e-commerce. We have this uh, this column called required fields. So now you can set up that uh, certain fields are required before you can save a product in the in the e-commerce backend. So uh, this will help editors not forgetting the important fields to uh, to save on the products before it gets uh, published. So that was uh, the features that I would like to show you. And now I will try to uh, switch to uh, to Nikolai. Um, so he can uh, tell you more about the improvements in the development platform. On statistics in Dynamic Web, since uh, the introduction of online marketing and then all the features we've added uh, on um, uh, reporting and analytics in Dynamic Web, we've started to collect uh, way more data. Some of it is not performing uh, that well, so in 8.4.1 we've focused a lot on improving the performance on statistics collection so this is an improvement you would be able to uh, get from uh, to measure in, in the front end when you're showing pages you wouldn't be able to see any difference but you can easily measure a, a big difference uh, on the collection in, in the front end then we've added a number of minor features throughout the system primarily targeted at use uh, usability but also for you implementers when you're implementing the websites this is a, a example of some, uh, of some of them the new websites loop uh, for the layout templates. Uh, in the file manager, we now have an upload button because it was uh, you had to right-click earlier to upload. That gave us some usability issues. We've introduced control uh, plus S for saving screens like page properties and paragraphs and items and products. Um, we've begun, begun to do this. Uh, it's not implemented everywhere, but it makes it uh, way faster to edit content. Um, and also, for, to the user interface, wherever you choose a layout template, it's now possible to edit the template directly from the selector uh, if you're logged in as an administrator so you don't have to go into the file manager. Um, on Razor templates, we've added a lot of new features, the template tags uh, uh, method and so on. I'll get back to that on a later slide. Uh, some improvements on external users and for, uh, when exporting and importing in, in the user management. Um, we can now you know, run the entire website in, in SSL and have uh, server-side validation on, on website level instead of page level. Uh, you can use uh, .NET code in, uh, in smart searches. And we have a number of other uh, features implemented in 8.4.1. You can see them on the release section. Uh, regards to Razor, uh, we've done a lot of improvements uh, on the Razor helper methods that you have available when you're doing Razor uh, text. So some of the things that you uh, previously uh, know from HTML-based templates that you have been able to use in Razor template as well is now available in Razor syntax. So now you have the uh, template text method. You can use snippets, you can use translate and master page file and include file and, 
a lot of other of these things that you know from our HTML based, uh, based template uh, implementation is now also available in uh, in Razor notation. Uh, so these are some of the tags that you could use the old or the HTML uh, tag notation, and now we have a Razor uh, equivalent instead. So. A nice improvement for, for those of you working with uh, Razor and those of you that doesn't work with Razor yet, a nice improvement when you start working with Razor tomorrow. So items, I'm going to show you uh, some of the things on, on this one. On the, um, the tech conference that took place uh, uh, two months ago, we got a lot of feedback uh, that could be improved on, on the items and uh, some of these things have already been made into the system on this 8.4.1 release. Um, I'll, instead of going through this slide, I'll switch to my uh, administration so we can take a look at some of uh, the things. Um, I have the management center and the uh, administration of item types in here. First of all, we've added uh, right-click over here, so we have context, uh, context sensitivity on uh, on the navigation in here. And um, let's take a look at some of the things that has come into here. If we start with the settings, we have some new fields in here. One of the uh, regular things that we have, I have a piece of news here, and it has a heading, and that heading is what we use on the page, but we also want the page item to be named the same and used in the URL and have the title of that one. Now we can say I want the heading to be the name of the page. So when I change this name, the page, uh, the name of the page will also change accordingly to this one. And also I can, instead of use a field like this, I can just uh, define something like this. I can say news I'm, and make a pattern on, on what it should be. And this is the system name of the field. So this would be uh, uh, the name of the page on, uh, on all items carrying uh, this schema. So one uh, minor change, um, that is very nice. If we have a look at a um, couple of other minor features in here, you can now have a list of items in here, and I choose the item type now. I have the possibility of being able to sort the list uh, when it's in the front end. I can choose all the fields and the sort order we're going out. Uh, another uh, couple of features in here is um, there's a new product type in here, so now I can actually make a product selector so I can have an item type that carries a product and renders all the product information as part of the uh, item type. And there are some other settings on some of these um, item types that are now available, so it's worth looking into the release notes on developer to get all the, the details on how that work. If we switch to the publisher, it has also gained a lot of new things, which makes it way easier to use. Um, choose the item type as, as we uh, are used to. Now I have the possibility of select several items to the list. Instead of just one item or all items on a specific page, I can selectively say I want this and that and uh, that item. So I have three or four items or whatever. And of course they are run uh, as a list of, uh, of items. Another thing is, is this one I can now see, I want to include all fields. Before you have to choose which fields to include, so if you added a new field on an item type, it would not be included and you would not figure out where the hell is it on my template. Now I can specify I want all, uh, or I can go to the selected, which is, uh, has got a new and improved user interface. It's way easier to use than, uh, than we did before. Um, other interesting things is the uh, order by in here. Uh, we now have the created date and updated date of the items. So this would be the created page, uh, created date on the page in or the paragraph that the item is attached to. Now we can sort by these values uh, when we display uh, a list of items. It's been much uh, wanted. Um, and the most important and nice feature is this now, filtering. So instead of just getting all the news from this solution, I can say I want all the news items in here. I can start sorting by properties on the news. So name is something, or if I have a checkbox, uh, that has a value or something like this. And I can combine a number of rule and I can say and or all. That's the only sp specific things I can do right now. I cannot make groups of rules, uh, not in this implementation. But this feature is a very, very nice feature that would be uh, putting up a lot of new things that we can do with the item publisher. So take a look at this and, uh, and how that one works. It's a, a great new addition. 
So that was a couple of the highlights. There are many more minor things, uh, new template tags and new things you can do uh, around uh, defining the item types and so on that you can see on the uh, release notes on, on the website. So and regards to the item creator, because of the change you just saw with the title field, there's a functionality change about the title functionality, how it works there, because now it's, it's using the new feature instead of the one we had before. So that brings us to the roadmap for 8.5 due in August, and I think Ashley will get take over the presenter mode again. No, just keep the presenter, and I will just speak through your yes. slides. Um, as Nicolai just mentioned, the 8.5 release uh, last Tuesday in August, and could you just switch to the next slide, and I will uh, talk you through the, the different parts of the, the roadmap. If we start from the top, we have the online marketing, where we will keep on uh, adding a lot of new functionalities to the campaign automation, uh, like uh, the functionality I just uh, showed you with the uh, recent, and uh, we have the abandoned shopping cart and so on and so forth. So we will add the new features. If you have any feature requests uh, in terms of this, please let us know. It's about time for, for the 8.5 release. We will also do a uh, text module, SMS module, uh, to the backend of Dynamic Web as well. We had this a couple of years ago, and now it has been uh, requested to uh, to be updated and, and uh, to be back in the backend of Dynamic Web. In the e-commerce track, we have uh, the recommendation engine in a beta version. We will uh, release the beta, and we will start up uh, during the autumn to, uh, to uh, bring the first couple of solutions live with this recommendation engine and try to optimize it so it will be ready for the 8.64 final release there. Also, we have assortments, which will be the possibility to create different assortments for different kinds of customers. So some customers can see some products that others can't see, and so on and so forth. Also, we will uh, add loyalty points to the e-commerce track. Uh, it will be the possibility to gain loyalty points when you buy something from the website, and of course, spend the loyalty points again on, on the web shop. In the content area, we will uh, add Dictionary, uh, a new way of uh, doing translations uh, globally on the solution instead of on each template. We will uh, provide you with uh, some standard uh, design templates for the content management, just uh, basic templates uh, so you can uh, have a, a high setup, uh, setup when you uh, implement Dynamic Web Solutions. And we have also uh, some uh, space in the calendar to do a lot of new items updates as well. We keep on getting a lot of feature requests from you and just uh, let them uh, keep coming because we uh, we love them and we love to see you use the items uh, as much as you do. And we have uh, time in the calendar to, uh, to make updates on, on this functionality uh, as well. On the developer platform, uh, we have easy install. Some of you saw it on the on the tech conference in uh, some sort of a beta mode from uh, from Nikolai. We have uh, polished it a, a bit, and uh, it's uh, it's final for release in 8.5. And also we have uh, something called extended enterprise support. It's an ongoing track where we will keep up uh, updating the performance on, on the Dynamic Web and, and add a new, some new features uh, to the platform, uh, improving the MVC implementation and so on. Finally, the track integration framework. We have a uh, uh, PIM integration. Uh, we right now have uh, extended the framework to, to be able to contain data from a product information management system. We have a proof of concept with the, with the Perfion PIM. Uh, and we will also extend the framework to, to be able to receive and send out data from uh, to our CIM. Uh, so you have, for instance, leads and uh, email responses and so on. Uh, so you have the possibility to publish them to your CIM system uh, as well. So this is the roadmap for 8.5 last Tuesday in August. We hope that you are as excited as uh, we are. And, uh, of course, uh, please let us know if you have any requests for this uh, and we will handle them. That was about it for uh, for this webinar. If you have any questions, please uh, just ask them, and, and we'll try to answer as many of them as possible. Maybe you should unmute the entire. <laughs> just try to let it go. No, you have a section in the in the in the webinar control panel. There's a question box where you'll be able to answer to ask questions if you have any otherwise please uh, just uh, send us an email or ask on twitter we will uh, be happy to answer you there as well
No. Yeah, there's uh, one uh, question. What is loops for websites used for? Nikolai, will you uh, answer that? Uh, can you repeat, please? What, what is, is loops for websites sites used for? It's actually, I can just answer that. It's actually just the loops with all the websites that you have in the solution. So you have the, an easy way to implement the, the website selector or language selector uh, in the front end. Yeah, it's yeah. basically so you can link to other language version of a specific page and so on. And I also have a question from Kevin on, I've heard you're rewriting the product search, but it's not on the roadmap. It's Kevin that asked that. It's true that we are we are looking into uh, improvements on the rewriting of the how we index the the products. It's a very early project and it's probably not going to be fully released with the August thing. So that's why it's not on on uh, the roadmap yet. So it's, it's part enough. of the work for the extended enterprise support team. But yeah, we are not uh, certain that it will be released for uh, eight point five yet. And PS it's asking if website yeah. documented now. I think it should be, or it will be very shortly because it's in progress. The documentation of this, otherwise, you would be able to see it with the DV template tags in your layout template. How about an index of all items inside a solution? Um, you're talking about uh, items from items or items else in every piece of data in Dynamic Earth, Kevin? Um, we actually, items as items here. Yeah. We actually do have an item uh, indexer in, in our source code. We're not using it uh, for the time being um, because, yeah, we are figuring out how to to handle search uh, in general in, in Dynamic Earth. So and we don't want to change. Uh, the search provider on the search weighted module just yet because we need to see uh, some of the results of the ongoing development work on the new index as you uh, pointed out. Excel user import available? Yes, that's one of the things that uh, should be available with, uh, it has been for a couple of releases, but now you can choose what kind of fields you want to import and export, so you have, have this one, import users, you should be able to choose um, an Excel file in here. Um, ask, are you sure it's supported yet, or yeah, is it still it's supported from, from this release, yes. Yes, it is, so you can choose an Excel file uh, at this point. Any, Any other more questions, questions, or yeah. should we call it a day and say thank you for listening and of course if you have any more questions please uh, let us know and we just have one final question I from the you, sir. yeah it ain't gonna happen <laughs> before the public <laughs> that's because item users are not items if you want a user item type you just put it in you just create an item type called a user and you put it where items belong it's a, there's a lot of technical things on using items on users and we have the same discussion on products. So for now, uh, it's not because it's difficult to implement because, uh, but it will have a lot of consequences and uh, it will not be there uh, for the time being. What about authentication? Oh, if you're using items uh, or users in, in the tree, yeah, you wouldn't be able to do that. Users are users in here, and uh, uh, we can have a discussion on what you need, what you need, uh, and why you need item types in user management. You don't need it because you have custom fields on users, and you have custom fields on users uh, on user groups, and you don't need item types on users basically. And you, we don't want to create a new structure on the user tree that does the same thing as the content tree, so you have different types of users throughout the system and so on, because it will eventually kill the system. Yeah. Okay. 
So uh, thank you for listening and uh, have a very nice day. I'm uh, looking forward to see all of you updating all your solutions to 8.41. And uh, with that word, so I just think that we should say uh, thank you and uh, have a nice day.